Hey guys, it's Garrett with Tactical Repair again. I'm just finishing up this FDC bypass and I figured I'd show you real quick how to assemble a soft fuel line end fitting. So you've got your bare line here, there's nothing on it. So the first thing you do is you take your fitting that you saved from the old line you pulled off or a new fitting if you want to replace them. Uh, say they've been rounded off with a wrench or something. You can get new ones from any truck shop or any place that carries DOT airlines. So the first thing you do is you slide this on here. You don't have to go real far. And some food for thought, since you're at this point, and what I mentioned earlier, when you're replacing this line from the fuel filter housing to the hydraulic head, if you do have two different size fittings, so you've got a 9 16 and a 5 8 what you want to do is you put your larger of the two fittings, say your 5 8 on the fuel filter side. And this is just so in the future, if you do develop a leak up there and you need to tighten the line, you can take this end off down here and get the wrench past this fitting to slide up the line and tighten that. See, if you've got a 9 16 up there and you've got a 5 8 down here, you're not going to be able to get the wrench past this this fitting you'll have to cut the line off and get a new crush washer and everything so you can slide the wrench up and tighten that so that's just just food for thought if you've got two different size fittings make sure the smaller one is on this end so you've got your threaded fitting on here the next thing you want to do is take your crush ferrule and I called it a washer earlier I don't know why just you know anyway take this and slide it on here and the last thing you do is you take your insert and you slide that inside the line sometimes they fit fairly tight you've got to really push them in and that's why you want to put these two on here first because if you've got a tight fitting one when you push it in it'll expand the line then you won't be able to slide these on so that's the order you need to do that then <coughs> You'll take your line and route it the way you want to, which, by the way, you need to follow the routing that you want when you are getting your line length to begin with. Because once you cut it, well, you can't really efficiently add to it if you come up short. So I routed mine the way I wanted it before I cut the line so I can follow the lines. And you want to come over here slide the line in and what you want to do here is slide it in as far as it'll go and then slide your other fitting and crush barrel up make sure it's fully seated and then start threading the fitting in which sometimes they'll fight you as this one kind of is It'd be nice if I had an extra hand, like I usually say. So you've got it. Oh damn, it still didn't start. It's good to show you what you're up against here. You definitely don't want this to cross thread, so getting it threaded by finger is a must. If you cross thread it, then you're kind of screwed. So, we've got it started, and we're going to make sure once again that the line is all the way in there seated before we start tightening it down. If you start tightening it down before it's all the way seated, you'll never get it to stop leaking. So. Let's see, yep, that's a 5.8. I'm going to take your wrench and start turning it. And you'll feel it when the fitting bumps up against the crush ferrule and it starts to compress, which is right there. Just feel a little bit of resistance. So, what you don't want to do is tighten it up so much that you have no space 
between the shoulder on the nut and the fitting. If you do that, then you'll never have any room to tighten it up later if you do develop a drip. You don't need to tighten it up that much. So now it's really starting to compress. Some good resistance there and that's really about as far as you need to go you can have a thread or two left sticking out you don't have to um, it doesn't help to tighten it up any more than it needs to be tightened so now that you've got that connected you can go back and secure your line with zip ties or whatnot or if your truck does have the extra line holders which this one was missing a couple then you want to bolt that down keep the line in place you don't want these rattling around because um, that just will add to abrasion on everything that it's rubbing so once you've got it replaced make sure it's all secure in as many places as you can and you're good to go so that is how you replace a soft line and put the end together and this is a completed fuel density compensator bypass. You'll notice I've got the elbow installed over there. And I've got on the back of here, I've got the 1 8 pipe plug installed. Here I've got the quarter inch pipe plug installed. And I've got my new line from the hydraulic head all the way down around and back up to the back of the fuel filters. That is a completed fuel density compensator install. So we will see you guys next time. I hope you guys all find this helpful. Thanks.